Now we're going to learn about multiplying fractions with negatives. So let's review our integer rules to help us get started. Let's start with addition. If we have the same signs and we're adding, then we add the numbers and we keep the sign. And that applies also to fractions. So here I'm actually going to add negative 2 and a half plus negative 5 and 2 thirds. We know that when we're adding fractions, we want to make sure we have the same denominator. So when I get the same denominator for both of these of 6, I end up with negative 7 and 7 6. And I need two root roots, so I end up with negative 8 and 1 6. With different signs and adding, we always subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the larger. So in this next example of adding fractions that have different signs, we're actually going to subtract and keep the sign of the one we have more of. I need to get common denominators first to be able to figure that out. In this problem, once I end up with common denominators, I realize that negative 5 and 91 over 126 is the larger value, absolute value of these two. So I have more negatives than positives, so I know my answer is negative. And I actually need to take negative 5 and 91 over 126 and make it my top fraction for subtracting. So I'm going to write this as 5 and 91 over 126 minus 5 and 12 over 126. And I'm going to have a negative answer because I have more negatives than positives. I'm subtracting because they're different signs. So when I I end up with negative 79 over 126. Now let's review our integer rules for multiplication and division. So if they're the same signs, what sign do we end up with? Positive, right? Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. So what's negative 20 divided by negative 2? 10. Different signs gives us what sign is our answer with multiplication and division? Negative, right? So what's negative 3 times 8? Negative 24. And what's negative 26 divided by 13? Negative 2. A quick reminder for working with fractions is that you always want to cross-cancel if possible. That is the very first thing that you're going to want to do, cross-cancel if at all possible. And cross-cancel means that you try to find the greatest common factor that will divide into numbers that are crisscross from each other, if at all possible. Once you have cross-canceled, then you're just going to multiply straight across numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So basically, A over B times C over D equals AC over BD. That's the basic idea. So in this particular problem, is there a number that will divide into 22 and into 33? 11, right? So 11 goes into 22 two times. 11 goes into 33 three times. Is there a number that will divide into 25 and 40? 5, right? 5 goes into 25 five times. 5 goes into 40 eight times. Now I can multiply straight across. 2 times 8 is 16. 5 times 3 is 15. I do need to simplify this by changing it into a mixed number, so I end up with 1 and 1 15th, because 15 goes into 16 one time with one left over. We also need to keep in mind the sign of our answer. You don't really need to keep up with your sign as you're cross-canceling. Just when you get your answer, ask yourself, did I have same signs or different signs? I had different signs, so my answer is going to be what? Negative, right? When you have mixed numbers, you need to change mixed numbers into improper fractions because you're multiplying numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. You can't do that if you don't know what your numerators and denominators are, and it's very unclear what, numer what numerator you have with a mixed number. You have to change it to an improper fraction. So, for negative 2 and a half, that's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1. So that gives us negative 5 halves times negative 6 over 35. We want to check for cross-canceling is our next step. Do you see anywhere? What about 2 and 6? 
Now we'll go into two and six. Three, so we end up with one and three there. What about five and thirty-five? Any chance there? Five. Five will go into five once and into thirty-five seven times. Now we're going to multiply straight across. One times three is three. One times seven is seven. And we have same sign. So what's our answer? Positive, right? The sign of our answer is positive. So here I'll recap the important rules. You want to make sure that you change all mixed numbers to improper fractions. Then you want to cross cancel, if at all possible. Then multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Simplify your fraction if necessary and then change back to a mixed number if necessary. Go ahead and try this next problem and then see how you did. So you should have changed negative 1 and 2 thirds into an improper fraction of negative 5 thirds and changed 3 and 2 fifths into an improper fraction of 17 fifths. Cross canceling the fives, um, you, that's all the cross canceling you can do, and then multiply the numerators and the denominators, you end up with negative 17 thirds, and simplify this equals negative 5 and 2 thirds. When you have multiple fractions, a really cool thing that you can do is you can cross cancel any denominator with any numerator. They don't have to be right next to each other because it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in as long as you have all multiplication. This really is the same thing as saying negative 12 times 9 times 7 over 25 times 14 times 36. And I could rewrite that any way I'd like. So I could rewrite this as having the 9 over the 36, and having the 7 over the 14, and having the 12 over the 25, if I want to. So because of that, we can cross cancel across from each other and let it back. So you see any way that you can cross cancel. How about 7 and 14? Does anywhere else? 12 and 36. Anywhere else? Now you can cross cancel again if you, if you find a place where you can cross cancel again. So it's 3 and 9 will cross cancel. And now we cross cancel as much as we can. So we're going to multiply straight across. 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. 25 times 2 times 1 is 50. And we have one negative. We have an odd number of negatives, so our answer is 9. So now I'd like you to try this next problem. Be sure to cross cancel everywhere you can. After cross canceling, I end up with 1 times 3 times 1 in the numerator, which gives me 3, and 5 times 1 times 1 in the denominator, which gives me 5. I have an even number of negatives, therefore my answer is positive. On this next page, be sure to change all of your mixed numbers to improper fractions, and then apply the method we used on the previous problem, and check back and see how you did. I ended up with negative 12 and 4 fifths after changing all my mixed numbers to improper fractions. I have a negative answer because there are an odd number of negatives being multiplied together. On the next page, we're talking about multiplying fractions with variables. We're going to apply the same steps to these problems as we would to any multiplication problems with negatives, positives, and fractions. So let's make this three together. So first of all, two-thirds times 15 over m is the same thing as two-thirds times 15m over 1. So you need to understand that 15m is actually in the numerator over 1. So now I can cross-cancel. 3 will go into 15 five times. And that's all we can cross cancel. Now we can multiply numerators and denominators. 2 times 5 is 10, times m is m. And in the denominator we have a 1, so our answer is just 10m. Try the next problem. You should end up with negative y over 5. Make sure you're cross canceling. Now try the next problem. For the next problem, you end up with 3n over 4. You're multiplying two negatives, so you end up with a positive. Now try the last problem. In this last problem, you're going to end up canceling those a's that are crisscrossed from each other, because remember, 
when you have the same variable, they represent the same number. So they can uh, cancel to equal 1, just like the seconds cross cancel to equal 1. And you're left with 6.